Ya Shalom, beautiful family. Shabbat Shalom to all of you who observe the Shabbat today. The Genesis Prayer, the ancient secret that grant miracles. The Genesis prayer, the Anna Bokowak, is called the Genesis prayer because it is found in the book of Genesis. It's called the Genesis prayer because it is the first prayer in the Bible. Bereshit. All of the patriarchs knew the secret of the Anna Bokoak. Every single one of them, starting with Yatsikar all the way up to the apostles. All praises to the Most High that He revealed this to us right now. For us to activate and benefit from. And also, the Most High is revealing to us the mysteries. Attached to this prayer. We're going to get in the book and we'll talk about the history of this. Anna Bokoak. Why was it taken out of your, taken out of your Bible? Why is it not there? According to our brother, Yeshua the inner fire, the men uh, uh, accredited to this Anabokoak prayer, Ben Hakana, is none other than Simon the Zealot. If Simon, one of the disciples of Yahushai, is Ben Hakana, and he's accredited to the Anabokowak, then your mind should be formulating this question. Hmm. Who taught it to Simon? And if Simon had it, that means all the other disciples or apostles had it also. That also means Yahweh Shai taught it to them. If Yahweh Shai taught it to them, why isn't this prayer in Matthew? How come when you flip over to the book of Luke, of Luke, you don't see it? When you're looking in Luke, you don't see it. Why is it not in the book of John? Who took it out? How come you don't find it in Solomon? Solomon... The, the wise men, Solomon, with the Sefer Harazim. You mean didn't tell me he didn't have the Anabokoak prayer? It's not in the book of Psalms? Okay. There have been some crafty counsel. We'll get the history, family. The Most High revealed to me some great information on the Anabokoak prayer. The wall of Jericho was the divine harmonic psalmatic frequencies that were uttered to bring down the walls of Jericho. Jericho had seven walls. Anabokoak prayer had seven lines. Jericho had six encampments. Anabokoak prayer had six rows. 
Seven by six is 42. The first letter of each word make up a portion of the name of the 42 letter code of the name of the Most High. And within the 42, there is also another that is formed of a 22 letter name of the Most High, which correlates to the 22 Aleph Biet. The rabbit hole goes deep, family. Yahweh Shai came down through 42 generations. As we know, all praises to the Most High. The revelation itself was not the Anabokoak prayer, although it is. What was even more important is the fact that it goes directly with the activation of your 248 bones. 248 limbs in your body. Dead bones in the valley no more. You can actually put your hand over whatever part on your body that is hurting you. You can pray over that part using the Anabokoak prayer and heal thyself, physician. You can take the first line of the Anabokoak prayer and meditate for which day it goes with, which star, which planet, which zodiac sign, and take over that day. Once you start studying how to apply it properly, it will be amazing to you. As a matter of fact, our beautiful sister Minion Crawford had a great testimony by which she started to recite the Anabokoak prayer on her body and she saw light coming through her body. She gave her testimony on Big Levi channel. I'm not going to repeat it here. But she has her own testimony with the Anabokoa prayer. Another sister left a message. She said she was playing this. She she has um, some uh, some challenges in her anatomy, in her physiology. While she was reciting and meditating upon the Anabokoa prayer, her her the part of her body that she has the challenges with started to stretch. And it became so painful, she started to cry because it got so painful. But afterwards, what happened? She said she had great circulation. So her bones were expanding within her body. Ultimately, I'm not here to sell you the Anabokoak. No, it is your faith that made you whole. It is your faith that will make you whole in Zion. Because you can have a weapon in your hand, don't know how to use it. You can have all the ingredients to make cake. But if you don't know how to add the eggs, the cinnamon, the vanilla, the almond milk, the flour together, put, put a little brown sugar in it. If you don't know what temperature to turn on the oven and bake it for a certain amount of time, you will never be able to make the cake. You'll be stuck with eggs and flour. If you do not have the blueprint, you'll never be able to make something, put something together properly and present it. This is why connecting with the Most High and the angels come into play. This is why purifying yourselves by sevens in everything come into play. Musa says, come into my gates. Come in to my gates with thanksgiving and praise. Go ahead with all our vain repetitions. I heard you the first time. Let all creation praise the name of the Most High, the, the Mighty One. Hashem Yahuwah, the Creator, Gamet Papa Bonje Shangdi. Let all creation praise the name of the Most High. All creation above, all creation below. As above, 
so below. As above doesn't just mean in heaven. No, as above the earth. When you're standing on the earth, as above. So below means under the earth also. So let all creations on the earth and under the earth praise the name of Hashem. Let all creation in the heavens and on the earth praise the name of Hashem. As above, so below. As above, also so below under the earth. Do you perceive what I said? Moses says, I can't do nothing with you if you, if you don't have faith. So, apply the Genesis prayer, the Anabokoa prayer into your life. Incorporate it into your life. Put it to the test. See if it will work for you. You need all the ammunitions that you can get your hands on. The prophecy states you shall go through past smoothly during the tribulation times. The prophecy states you shall achieve stability during the tribulation times. The prophecy states the voices of the thunders, the voices of the seven thunders, is to allow the truth to uncover the lies. The wicked shall lose their dominion. And the righteous shall inherit a new heaven and a new earth. In the book of the remembrance, page 490. Right before the little book of John. Yahweh said this. But if you read it in the book of the remembrance, it's confusing as hell. But I rewrote it for you. When you go in the book of the remembrance of Melchizedek, page 490, you're going to read this. It's going to say, and the interpretation of it for the end of days concern the captives who are in mourning all the days of the dominion of Belial, who cut them off from the sons of heaven, a whole bunch of gibberish, which makes no sense. Here is how it was supposed to be written. I'm going to read it for you. The way I rewrote the interpretation thereof. So go check that out and then match it up with what I'm saying here, right here. There it goes. The interpretation are for the sons and daughters of Shem who live in the end of time right now, who mourn and are captive and who Satan cut off from the earthly mother and from the earthly mother's angels by means of technology, etc., etc. The Most High will recompense the Shemites from the burden of their iniquities that Babylon made them to suffer. When you go in the book of Melchizedek, book of remembrance, page 490, the top paragraph, read it and compare it to what I just read to you and see which one makes sense. This is why Yahweh says in the little book of John, when you receive these writings, come to me and I will reveal to you the truth. So the same goes for the Genesis prayer also. The Anabokoak. When you receive the Anabokoak, the Most High says, come to me and I will reveal to you the truth. That's what my wife and I did. And the Most High opened our eyes and he opened our ears and we heard the angels whispered sweet lullabies into our, he into our ears. And we heard how it connected with our bodies. And through our research, we found so many things. Daughters of Zion, the Most High have a very powerful lesson or a very powerful message coming your way. All the mothers, all the widows, all the wives, all the daughters, all the aunties, all the grandmothers, step right up. 
the next lesson coming through after this one is for you. The Most High loves you so much, you don't have the necessary words in your vocabulary to articulate the depth of your gratitude. Before we get into the Anabo Koak, the Genesis prayer, we must give respect and we must honor our sister, the Hebrew widow, for putting together a beautiful, a beautiful, powerful meditation for us. All over the web, people have their own rendition. Now we have our own. Play it in your home. Play it in your car. Of course, if you like the sound of my voice, if you don't, hell with it. But if you do, do what you do. Meditate on it. Create your own. Hey, that's better for you. Create your own with your own voice. Anoint it with your own prayers. But thank you, sister Hebrew widow, for blessing the nation with this. Anna Bokoak Kadula Yem Nikha Katil Siluba Kabel Rina Amka Sakben Kaharinu Nora Nagibo Dorshe Ye kudekha kebabat shamram wakem tarim rakamen zikateka tami gamlem hasin kadosh biro Tufka Nael Arateka Yahid Kehe Yamne Khapne Zokre Kedushateka Shavateno Haber Ushma Zaakateno Yodea Talumot Faruk Shem Kivot Leolong Marcuto Leolong Vae Baruch Shem Kivot Markuto Leolam Vaid We beg you with the strength of your right hand's greatness untie the bundle of sins prayer of your nation strengthen us purify us oh awesome one please oh strong one those who foster your oneness guard them like the pupil of your eye Bless them, purify them, show them pity. May your righteousness always recognize powerful, holy one, with your abundant goodness. 
guide your congregation. One and only exalted one, turn to your nation, which proclaims your holiness. I'm going to stop it right there, family. Just because if I let it play to the end, it's going to mess up the video. They're going to bring commercials into it. But definitely check it out on the community page. The sister did an amazing job. She adds sound effects. She slowed my voice down. I love it. The Genesis prayer. When you get this book, rededicate the book to yourself. Just like this. Okay? May the merit of all the miracles that flow from this ancient record. Okay? Go to, see? You have to cancel out their name where he says, uh, go to his children. Hell no. We cancel out everything. We cancel your miracles and your blessings. Rewrite it this way. Say, may the merit of all the miracles that flow from the ancient teaching and wisdom, okay, that flow from this ancient teaching and wisdom go to the last day Zion. I put it this way. That's what I wrote. I say, may the merit of all the miracles that flow from this ancient teaching and wisdom go to the last day Zion, the children of the covenant. The children of light, the sons of Shem. May they go to my family and I, your family and yours, and may all these blessings and miracles return back to us. Okay? So let's get into the history. Page two. The short prayer meditation revealed in this book has been lying concealed within the first verse of the Bible for over 3,000 years. The sages knew a secret formula that converted the Bible's first 42 letters into the universally acknowledged 42-letter name of the Most High. And by using modern mathematics... We can reveal for ourselves how profound that formula was. The 42-letter meditation was hidden from view from everyone except the ancient sages and the prophets until about 30 years ago. When the 2,000-year-old writings were translated from Aramaic to Hebrew, and then to English, and a whole new area of study was opened up to the world. You see, you, did, did you hear that? First mentioned in the book of Raziel, the angel Raziel, Raziel means mysteries. This is why the angel Raziel always bring the mysteries. This is why this angel is always there. Bringing the Kabbalah, the Zohar, the Sifa Habazim, and other records. So his name means mysteries. Not sure if he's a he or, or, or she. Doesn't matter. First mentioned in the book of Raziel, also known as the book of Enoch. And sometimes as the book of the generations of Yatsikad. The Anabokoak was passed on from enlightened teacher to highly selected student, Hierophants. It was not passed on to anybody. You are the generation of the wilderness, so you are not just anybody. Even though among us we know that there are mixed multitudes who cause nothing but chaos and confusion. We rebuke all the mixed multitude among us who are all of one nation. The Anabokoak was passed down from enlightened teacher or highly selected student and used in ways we can only dream of today. Did you hear that? It was used 
in ways we can only dream of today. One of the ways that it was used was the fact that you can use it to heal your body, to activate your 248 limbs, which science of today told you all your life you only had 206. The 206 plus the 42 equals to 248. It, so we came to find out by the Holy Spirit in the Talmud, in the Midrash, it's been said long ago. Because they had this record, they knew that you have 248. This is why. This is why they do all that they can do to draw out the life force from your body. Family, we're going to speak in cold words. That red liquid inside of you, I'm going to call it life force. Because the last time I said it, they took down my video. So they, they do all that they can do to poison the life force that is in you. They tint, they, uh, they corrupt your body. They draw the life force from the child at birth. They collect the life force, they send it to labs, and they study it. When the woman, when the woman... Open up her portal and she bring forth life through her portal. They take out her placenta or I should have used a code word for that one too. And they take it away from her. You got to actually encapsulate. You got to actually bury it under a tree or a rock. There is a pure, there is a process that happens after a life comes through the portal. That purification process must be done properly. There is a way to give birth to a child. They have you lay it on your back, which is the, not the correct way to give birth to a child. So this is a good time for me to tell you something. You know what? I won't. Let's keep going. So they... They develop all types of um, things. I'm going to call them things. You go ahead and use your brain and put it together to corrupt your body, to interfere with your RNA, with your DNA, so you won't be able to process or to receive. Okay? They're trying to change you. They're trying to block your portals. They're trying to block your ability to receive from the Most High by giving things to you. They're trying to prosecute you if you don't take those things. They have studied you from for thousands of years. That's why they know you. That's why they know how to piss you off. That's why they know what ticks you off. That's why they know how to bring down your frequency. Because they know you have 248. But they've been telling you you have 206. They put it in your books. They form colleges. They say your vertebrae is 206. Meanwhile, your vertebrae is 248. They know this about you. They have the Tamun. They have the Midrash. They have the Agada. They have the Tanya. They have the other records. So many other records. They have the Hekalo. They have so many other records that reveal to them a more complete version of yourself. But in the book of the Melchizedek chapter 12, the angels hold within themselves a perfect view of yourself. In the Essene gospel, it tells you that the trees are your brothers. In the book of the Remembrance chapter 8, it tells you learn to know the ways of the Erkadeshi. The earthly mother angels, the angels of the presence, the watchers of holiness, learn to know the ways and what they have to impart to you of what Anokis said, the most high will do, will say, will be. They will keep you in health. They will sustain you in health and you will live a long life. When the most high says, I have given my angels charge over you. For what? To educate you, to teach you, to put you on according to the heavenly kingdom. That's why Kabbalah is amazing because on the tree of life, the, the blessings of the Father comes to us through the ten emanations, through the ten sephirot, the, the ten sephiroth. By the way, did you notice that Aki's wife, Aki's wife's name is Tiphora? 
Tifora or T Tipira Tifara Tifara. No, I didn't want to go there yet. Hold up. I'll go there after. I don't want to go there yet. Let's not deviate from the lesson. I have so much to give you. Watch this. Let's wheel it back in. This information was passed down from hierophants to hierophants, from sages to sages. It was locked away for thousands of years until about 30 years ago. The book of Enoch, which is the book of Raziel, was actually part of the Bible until 325 CE. The, the prayer, the Anabokoak prayer, the Anabokoak prayer was also widely quoted, cited, paraphrased at least 100 times in nearly all the books of the New Testament, including the book of Revelation. Here you go. Because if Simon the Zealot had it, that means Peter had it, Matthew had it, Paul had it, John had it, Luke had it. That means Solomon knew about it. It was quoted, cited, paraphrased at least 100 times in nearly all the books of the New Testament, including the book of Revelation. So where is this prayer in your Bible? If it were not, if the Mosai did not lead us into the Kabbalah and the Zohar, this esoteric writings are hidden the occult, we would never have found out about this 42-letter name of Hashem, which is a technology of consciousness that you and I can use to draw down the emanations, the blessings of the Mosa, his power, his love, down from the Zerapin, connecting to the five worlds, connecting to the tenth Sifero, draw down all of them, all of the Most High's uh, goodness down to Malkut, to our world, where we are in our exile. With the Shekinah, if it was not for the for the uh, for the esoteric knowledge, we would have never have run into the Anabokoak prayer and connect with it and use it just like the ancient sages used it, just like our patriarch used it. And he already told you the ways that it was used back then. We can only imagine. But we're not going to imagine how it was used back then. We're just going to go to the Mosa boldly. Father says, come to the throne boldly. And I will reveal to you the truth of your world so just like they had it we're gonna get the drop from the most high from the shekinah from the holy spirit the most is gonna give us hook he's gonna give us hokma and also he's gonna give us by now get wisdom get understanding and all thy getting scripture says balance your getting with understanding overstanding understanding wisdom balances by now balances wisdom but overstanding balances wisdom. Wisdom balances overstanding. The right hand, the left hand. Grace and judgment. So we read again. The prayer was also widely quoted, widely cited, widely paraphrased at least 100 times in nearly... All the books from Genesis to Revelation. It was in nearly all the books of the New Testament, including Revelation. It was in all the books because this is called the Genesis prayer. That means it was in all the books. In every book. That means it should also be in the books of remembrance. Remember, I told you the books of remembrance. So let me take you there right now. So let me, let me, I wanted to give this to you last time. Since I didn't have the time, let me give it to you now. Let me give it to you now. Hold up. We'll come back. Forgive me. I didn't want to deviate, but we shall return. We shall return. Okay, let's go here. We shall return. Hold up. Let me give this to you right quick. Let me give this to you right quick. Okay. Watch this. Let's go to the first 2,000 years. 
Let's go to our patriarch Abraham. Abraham. Abram. Now, in the page 266, this entire book is filled with great information. Okay? We're just going to focus on one little paragraph right here. Watch this. Not only does Abraham, Abraham confirm that he was ordained a high priest before leaving Ur, Ur of the Chaldees, but he also tells us that while there, he received the Urim and Thummim, and he prophesied to the wicked citizens of Ur, and that if the wicked citizens of Ur did not repent, a great famine would descend upon them. By some means, he also gained possession of the precious records of the fathers. No, not by some means, by the Sefer Harazim. He gained possession of the precious records of our fathers, of the fathers of Yatsikar, of Noah, of Aki, of, ja of Jared. These records that Abraham gained possessions of, <coughs> excuse me, they were apparently, they were the books of remembrance which were handed down through the line of the patriarchs since the days of Adam. So now, watch this. These are the original books of remembrance in possession of Abraham. Joseph Smith translated some records of Abraham that he found or that he was led to receive. From these records, he took a very small portion, about 1.5% of it. He, he translated that part. He called it the books. He called it doctrines and covenants. Doctrines and covenant is about 0.1% of Abraham records. It is nothing. There are books of Abraham that we don't have. So within the books of remembrance that Abraham inherited down um, from the patriarchs by using the Sefer Habazim, which, which gave him the correct location, the correct longitude and longitude to go and get it from wherever it was hidden. He also had within his possession... The Sefer Habazim, which includes in the Book of Remembrance, he had the 42 letter name of the Most High and other records. So, the books of the remembrance that we have right now in our possession by using this Yom and Tumen, uh, Iowa, have okay, these are lightweight. This is just a shell. Remember, in the case of Enoch, the Most High told Abraham, I'm going to give you a higher Urim and a higher Thummim to build a king, um, a body of light. That's why he says, these are the children of the kingdom of the Most High who manifest the gifts of the Holy Spirit. These children were sent here with a mark on the forehead of crystal to receive the directions of the Most High directly. You are the Hebrews, the celestial 12 tribes created to be different. You are created with a higher spiritual capacity. Why? Because Abraham received a higher Urim and a higher Thummim. So therefore, his children were created with a higher spiritual capacity, a selective spiritual breed, a divine diaspora, an evolutionary which carries divine knowledge. This is who you are, children of the light created in the kingdom of lights by the very hands molded by the great architect and the father of lights. Do you know who you are, family? Remember who you are. Remember who you were because who you were is who you shall be. You are the generations of the wilderness. You have returned to do the tikkun, to correct and to complete your work on Mount Sinai where, where you had the opportunity to achieve immortality. Remember, I always tell you from the beginning, you are an immortal mortal. You are an imposter. 
You are acting like someone that you're not. You are really a soul in a body. You are not who you think you are. You are not Hebrew widow. You are way more than Hebrew widow. You are not Gina Paul. You are way more than Gina Paul. You are not Minion Crawford. You are way more than Minion Crawford. You are not Princess Lily. You are way more than Princess Lily. You are an imposter. You are a soul in a body. You are amazing. You are magnificent and beautiful. You were created very particularly. You are connected to your power, to your creator, to your framer, to your maker, to your shaper. You are an amazing piece of technology. You are the sacred site. You are the crystal. You are the storehouse of the Holy Spirit, just like the angels, just like Borakel. You're the trees, uh, just like uh, all the angels, all the they all they are all related to you. They have a perfect view of yourself within themselves. This is why you were born with angels to guide you, to minister unto you. The Anabokoak prayer, the Genesis prayer, was throughout the entire Bible. Where is it in the Book of Matthews? They have taken crafty counsel to keep you at the bottom. This mixed multitude are among us. 2,000 years earlier, okay, by 2000 BCE, the Egyptians also venerated the prophet Enoch and his works, absolutely, fa family, I have an excellent video to bring to you. I have so much to bring to you uh, on Enoch. So the Egyptians worshipped Enoch as Thoth, okay? They knew him by the name Thoth, the one who brought them knowledge of astronomy, absolutely. Because the Egyptians, the older, the first race of Egyptians, Kemet, were Atlanteans, not the new ones. Okay, Enoch came out of the motherland moon, the empire of the sun, and they went, he went, and others like him went and formed colonies out of the empire of the sun. So Enoch was a son, S-O-N, of the sun, S-U-N. He was a son, a child, a citizen of the motherland moon. So he went down to Kemet and he taught. He was so great. They worshipped him as a god. They called him Thoth, the god. The Greeks later on, even the Egyptians, also worshipped him as Hermes. He has so many other names. Seramis, whatever name he has, he has so many other names. The, the thrice great, the great great, the greatest great. Went down to the halls of Amenti and met that great being and re he received, he received wisdom. He received knowledge. That's what that's for. That's what this mudra is for. This mudra means you are wise. You got wisdom. That's what it's for. All your five fingers, each one stands for something. Your thumb is for fire. Your index finger is for air. Your middle finger is for space. The ring finger is for earth. The other one is for water. You have great healing in your power. Big Judas, a big Levi started to, to play around. He's, he's, he's playing around. He's flirting with the mudra. Do the same. Practice the mudra. I used to do mudra with my son when he was a little kid. We, we used to make up our own hand sign for I love you. When he walked away, I threw up my hand sign. And he will know that I meant I love you. And he will throw it back to me. Okay? Practice your mudra. It communicates something to the spirit world. It communicates something. Every line in your hands, every mark in your hand, every line, every mark means something. Every mark, every line communicates something to the angels, to each other, to the demons. 
This is wisdom and knowledge. This one means I'm ready for the task. It is level with my heart. Remember that one? I'm ready for prime time. Bring on the esoteric. Bring on the Kabbalah, the Zohar, the Sifa Habazim, Sifa Yetzira. Bring on all the ancient scrolls. They are level with my heart. I am ready for prime time. Bring it on. That's what it means. When, when you put your right arm over your left chest, that's what that means. You understand this? So they worship Enoch as theft. So what happened? Let's keep going. Of course, you know he taught them everything. Mathematics, medicine, geometry, music, arithmetic, botany, engineering, and divine. And, and also, he also taught them what? The divine names of the most. I remember though, the earlier, the earlier residents of Egypt, of Kemet, were Atlanteans. And also, they went all over the world. So the Nagas, they went to the east. Okay? The 42 books of theft, also known as the 42 books of instruction. No, family. Theft don't have just 42 books. I tell you what. Forgive me. Forgive me. I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to do this. But let me do this. Let me do this. Watch this. How many books stuff have? Let's find out. Okay? Thoth, which is in a... How many books did he have? Let's find out. In Egypt, Thoth, Thoth is known as one of the most divine potas. Forgive me. Forgive me. We're going to the book titled Lost Secrets of the Mystery Schools. The Coming of the Gods. Initiation and rebirth. I'm supposed to give this to you in another video, but let's bring it here. Thoth, known as Enoch, known as Hermes, Trismegistus, the three, the thrice great, the great, great, the greatest great. He is shown as one of the most divine pota. Pota is a word, it means creator God. He's he's one of the most divine creator gods in the mystery schools. In the mystery initiations in the great pyramid, he acted as the recorder during the weighing of the hearts of the dead in the judgment hall of Osiris. This is why he was able to go down to the halls of Amenti. Watch this. I am Blikes writing about the renowned god, Thoth, proclaim Thoth, Enoch, the author of 20,000 books. But another dude called Monetho increased this amount to more than 36,000 books. So there are more than 36,000 books associated with Enoch. The books he wrote in Egypt were written upon papyrus. Such a library of learning would incline one to think that no one, no one, in, no one individual could have accomplished such an overwhelming feat, but Enoch could have have accomplished that. Why? Because Enoch lived three hundred and fifty years. Enoch in the heavens in the Sefer Hekalot, Enoch three, which some of your old, I don't know, some dude said to throw it in the trash. The Sefer Hekalot, which is Enoch three. In that book, Enoch ascended to the heaven and, and became Metatron. You hear the sound? That's my Metatron amulet. Okay? Enoch ascended and became Metatron. The scribe of the gods. Knowledge and wisdom.
Enoch became Metatron. 36,000 books. Not just. Three to four hundred or twenty to forty, forty two books of thought, also known as the forty two books of instructions, which is fine because these two forty two books of instruction go with the forty two letter name of the Mosai, the Anabokoak. This, okay, so I, among the thirty six thousand, there were forty two which revealed the secrets of the gods themselves and all that was hidden in the stars. Unfortunately, he says, the writer says, they will never know. They will never know. As these books were all destroyed in the fire that burned down the great library of Alexandria. So, this mudra stands for wisdom and teaching. Not wisdom and knowledge. Forgive me. Wisdom. And teaching. Drawing down the energy of teaching. Wisdom and teaching. I didn't save it. There you go. Wisdom and teaching. Okay. So these 42 letter, 42 books of instructions reveal the secrets of the gods themselves. And all of that was hidden in the stars. And all of that was hidden in the stars. So astronomy, other things that were hidden in the stars were in these books, quote unquote, burned down. With the great library of Alexandria. Because the Sifir Raziel. Or the book of Raziel. Kept disappearing. And then popping up in the hands of only a select few. Now you know these books are not burned. You know these books are there. They're not burned. You know these books are still here. Powering on. Welcome to All Tech Lansing. You know these books are still here. But they're going to tell you some crap. To prevent you from looking into them. Mm? You know they got these books in libraries all over the world. You know that right? Because of the Sifir Raziel book. We're on page 3. Kept disappearing and then popping up in the hands of only a select few. Including Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Shem, and King Solomon. The Sifir Raziel is considered a mystical text. Yet the writings of the sages and prophets are bound with references and citations from it. As for the Genesis prayer itself... The book of Raziel spells it out exactly as we do in these enclosed meditations. The 42 specific words that describes God's the most high's greatness and our humbleness associated with 42 specific letters which are raised in seven lines and split in two triples or triplets per line. The book of Raziel Describes the prayer as follows. This is a holy name. In the book of Raziel it says this. The book of Enoch. It says this. This is the three Enoch. The Hekalot. This is a holy name. It is revealed by the combination going forth. From the beginning scriptures in the Torah. From Bereshit. From Genesis. From the bet of Bereshit, the first letter in the Bible, until the bet of Bohu, the 42nd letter. Knowledge of the wisdom of the Torah completes 
the names of the Most High. Knowledge of the wisdom of the Torah completes the names of the Most High. Blessed are they. The rows of, of marks or letters reveal the knowledge and wisdom is then revealed. The Genesis prayer was expounded upon in the Taro Hakuna. The what? The Toro Hakuna or a Taro Hakuna? It is a book called the Toro Hakuna. 2,000 years ago, it is the Taro Hakuna. 2,000 years ago. And then again in the Zohar. 1,900 years ago. And then. Here and there in whispered writings, all but disappearing until about 500 years ago, when it reappeared in the ultra complex and brilliantly coded writings of Isaac Luria, where we were given in <laughs> where we were given a massive amount of clues to its power. All right? Stay away from that word. So in the book, in the writings of Isaac Luria, we were given a tremendous amount of clues to the power of the 42 letter name of the Mosai, the Genesis prayer, the Anna Bokowak. It was the Arizal who advised us about the encrypted mathematics in the prayer in the Torah. Pentateuch, which is the Torah, and about what this connected to and what they revealed. Explaining which names of the Most High were associated with which verses and which gates they opened for us, figuratively and also literally. In other words, what we could get out of them and how to use them. The 42 letter names form several words, each expressing a definitive idea of fundam fundamental attribute to the Supreme Being. Let's go down here. Okay, it's also found in the Talmud, of course, in the Talmud sta states this. The 42 letter name is entrusted only to him who is pious. The 42 letter name is entrusted only to him who is pious, who is meek, middle age, free from bad temper, sober, and not insistent on his rights. So, let's see. The 42 letter name is entrusted only to him who is pious. Only to him who is pious. Let's get the definition of the word. Pious. Pious. Devout. Devoted. Reverent. Spiritual. Prayerful. Holy. Faithful. Godly. Dutiful. Righteous. Pious. So the 42 letter name is entrusted only to him who is pious. Meek. Let's get the definition of meek. Meek. Quiet. Gentle. Patient. Long suffering. Forbearing. Modest. Reverent. Lovely. The 42 letter name is revealed only to one who is middle aged. I'm 42, I'm middle aged. I'm free from bad temper, I'm sober. And you are too, because it's revealed to you now. Now, 
not insistent on his rights. And he who knows that is he who knows the 42 letter name is heedful. Therefore, he observes that in purity. He who knows the 42 letter name is beloved above and he is popular below. Your, your ancestors, your brethren in, um, in the uh, celestial realms, in the galactic realm, they know you. You are beloved above by them. Enoch is right now in the heavenly Jerusalem and Abraham and King Solomon and David and, and, and Ben Hakana, Simon, Matthew, Peter, Luke. They're all rejoicing, Paul. They're rejoicing at the fact that we came upon this knowledge. They say, oh, look at them. So we are beloved above. And the nation's going to know who we are. Because we're going to apply it and connect to it just as they connected to it. Heavenly Father, send your spirit among us. And make the circle complete. Activate all of our limbs. Activate our wisdom limb. Our overstanding limb. Activate all the crevices of our bodies. That we may overstand, understand, understand. All around stand the sacred, the secrets, the mysteries of the Anabokoak revealed to us how the ancestors used it, that we too may use it and give and bring you glory. That we may apply it, apply it into our lives. To work miracles, to break great, to bring great sustenance into our lives with certainty into every area of our lives. Heavenly Father, open our eyes to every word, every letter, every line of the Genesis prayer, the Anabukoa prayer that Enoch had in his possession, that Abraham had in his possession, that Simon and Yahweh had in his possession. Bring us. Into full remembrance. To the Anabokoak prayer that Moshe had. That we may do your work with power. That we may heal the sick. That we may raise the dead figuratively and literally. That we may work great miracles on the earth father among Zion. You say. We shall achieve stability. The Holy Spirit will come to activate in us the gifts of the Spirit. To activate in us our fruits and turning them into our gifts. Gifts of prophecy. Gifts of miracles. Gifts of healing. Gifts of speaking ancient tongues. Spiritual scientific tongues. Gift of interpretation of tongues. You said so, Father. Open the portals on the on the cipheret, on the on the uh yes on the tree of life, and pour out, and pour down, and pour over. Your wisdom, shower your people with your wisdom, that we may partake of the same feast that our righteous ancestors took part of. And we give all glory, all honor, all praises to you, great Holy One. While the writings in the Talmud are timeless, the Zohar adds that it would be our generation, the generation of knowledge, that would receive this knowledge and insights openly. It is our generation the generation of the wilderness that have returned to make the circle complete, to finish the job, to achieve immortality. We have returned, family, and we are going to receive the knowledge and the insights openly and fully and thoroughly. 
the sages explain that each generation is different from its predecessor in its ability to process and utilize the various spiritual tools. So while the pre preferred level of purity stated above will be beneficial to all, it's no longer a requirement. The Sifa Hapilaya describes how the archangel Metatron himself dictated the wisdom of the Genesis prayer to Ah Hakana. So, <clears throat> so it was Metatron who dictated the wisdom of the Genesis prayer to Ben Hakana to Simon the Zealot. It is, it is stated in the Sifa Hapilaya. So it was not Yahweh Shah who gave it to him. It was the Me Archangel Metatron who is also Enoch in the Sifa Hekalot, Enoch 3. The author of the Torah Hakuna is also Hakana. He got his information, but where he got his information from, we can only speculate. Hmm, okay. Hold on, let's read that one more time. The 15th century text, Sefer Hapilaya, describes how, how the archangel Metatron himself dictated the wisdom of the Genesis prayer to Hakana, which is Simon the Zealot. Who is the author of the Torah Hakuna? Where he got his information from, we can only speculate. What? Listen to this. We do not know. We do know that great sages and scholars like. Abraham Abu Lafia, you can find none of the, none of his books. None of the books this dude writes. Or the writings that he took from our people and put it into books, you cannot find it. I post one on my community page and it was almost $9,000. In his writings, listen, these writings that he compiled together were reserved for most of the more powerful meditations for their select pupils select students select initiates and so it's been for thousands of years from patriarch to prophet to sage the wisdom and knowledge of the genesis prayer have been secretly passed down and passed around but about 30 years ago that all changed that's why it tells you right here the requirement is no longer the, the way by which we receive or they receive the Anabokwak prayer in, the, in, in times past is no longer the case. Because right now we can just connect with the Holy Spirit. This is the age of revealing. This is the age of Aquarius. Everything will be revealed to us. The Genesis prayer, the most Powerful prayer of all times. The Genesis prayer is the most powerful prayer of all time. Whether you believe it or not, it's up to you. But if you disagree, it's up to you. But according to the records that we have, the Genesis prayer, the most powerful prayer of all time. It's up to you. The second century Zohar, which spoke extensively about the Genesis prayer, spoke about our generation, 1800 years, as being the generation of knowledge. This generation is called the generation of knowledge. Okay, we read that from the Tikkun Zohar. It also said that this generation, this was the generation in which all the ancient secrets were to be revealed 
I've been telling you, the most I says, all my revelation shall be revealed to you. This is the generation in which all the ancient secrets are to be revealed. First among them is the Genesis prayer. Prophecy fulfilled. Let's read the bottom. Without the meditations, the 42 letters are all but useless to us. This is the component that has been concealed from us for too long. The third component we spoke of is more abstract. Okay, so we don't got to go into that. We have to do the meditations, family. You got to do the meditations. You read the page. They talk about three components. One here, two in the middle, and three at the bottom. Okay? Apply yourself. Read it. Learn it. Pray that the Most High open your throat chakra so you can enunciate the words properly. It took me about a couple of weeks to do it myself. I'm still learning how to enunciate and pronounce the words properly. Brother Paul have a polio hebrew version i have not been able to go there yet i wanted to to act to act at least master this hebrew first to go to go in further into the polio hebrew which is more accurate and also more difficult so maybe in the next week or two we will introduce brother paul's version of the anabokoak prayer in polio hebrew Generations have recited the Anabokoak and never knowing about the power that lay within it, only that it, it was there in their prayer books. And thus, some sage or some prophet must have said it's beneficial. Okay? The Genesis prayer is so powerful. That some of the most important prayers in the Jewish services or in the Hebrew. Alright, so now this is the hijack. Alright. But oh, we can flip that. Some of the most important prayers in the Hebrew services, which are in the books, are designed to connect to its energy. Alright? So the first blessing of is the uh, Amida or the Amida. Or the silent meditation said three times a day. Here's the first meditation. The Shema. Remember the Shema? In Deuteronomy 6. Let me bring that up and read it to you real quick. Deuteronomy 6. Deuteronomy 6. Where you at? Deuteronomy 6 verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Okay? And you shall love the most high your power with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I command you today shall be in thy heart. And you shall teach them. You shall teach the Anabokoak diligently unto thy children. You shall teach the Shema diligently unto thy children. And you shall talk of them when you sit in your house. And when you walk by the way. And when you lie down. And when you rise up. You shall bind them for a sign upon thy hand. And they shall be as frontless between thy eyes. I'm not sure if this is uh, an invitation for tattoos for the Shema. <laughs> Bind them on your, on your hands as a sign. That's a tattoo right there. So the Shema, which is a, an excellent meditation to do, 
with the Anabokoak prayer to be recited in the morning, in the evening, in the night is one of the first meditation you can do. Okay? I'm going to park it right here, family. I'm not going any further with any more information. I pray that this little, slight little video right here was able to bring some clarity to the Anabokoak. So you could see all my pages here. The Anabokoak, the first prayer in the Bible. That's why it's called the Genesis prayer. You could read these pages yourself. Go back and read everything I read. Get your own understanding. All the patriarchs had it. All the books in the Bible had it. They took it out so you never have the power. You never be able to connect. Okay? You have enemies, family. You have real enemies among you. You have the church of Satan. The sons of darkness among you. The mixed multitude among you. Pray. Purify yourselves by seven in everything. Develop your relationship with the Most High. Connect with the angels. Connect with the tree of life. Connect. I have a little information to bring to you on the tree of life. And I'm going to, it's going to help you open up your eyes to see certain things differently. Okay? I'm not going to bring it here in this video. I've held you long enough. Listen to the Shema for a few seconds and then we'll close out with the Anna Bokoak rendition by our sister Hebrew widow. Shalom, family. All praises to the Most High Power. The Great I Am, loving kindness, the Holy Great One, the power of Zion. All praises to the All Merciful Father, the One who was, the One who is, and the One who is to come. 
Family, remember who you are. You are the children of the kingdom. You are the people of the book. And you manifest the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Until next time.